Normally when you think of chord inversions, you think of stuff that's like snobby music theory, or maybe it's only good for jazz guitar players. Nope. Check this out. See, chord inversions can be pretty metal. Today we are going to do our second lesson on this topic and get into the more complex seventh chord inversion, some of which I used in that little mini tune there. And welcome to Music with Marky. If you came by this video first and you don't really understand chord inversions yet, you might want to check out my first lesson on it. I'm linking it up there. That's the basic major minor chord inversions, or you can watch them out of order or click on another video entirely because this is the internet and none of us watch any of the videos all the way through. That said, let's get started. We're going to first take a look at the basic seventh chords that we're talking about, and then I'll show you the inversions for them. You have four types of seventh chords that you can play. One of them is a diminished, and we're going to kind of set that aside for a moment because it gets a little bit odd. But the primary ones that get used are your basic major seventh, minor seventh, and the dominant seventh. Now these chords, like all chords, are made up of specific notes. With your basic major and minor chords, you have one, three, and five, the first, third, and fifth of the scale degree, which we've discussed before. And now we're adding in the seventh note, so everything's gonna be built off one, three, five, seven. Now, if you remember with our first chord inversion lesson, all the inversion is, is taking the chord and starting on the second note or the third note of the chord. So if you had your basic C major, it's the first, the third, the fifth. Well, the first inversion of it is the third, the fifth, the first. It's just kind of using math. So if we're looking at the inversions of seventh chords, the first inversion is three, five, seven, one, second one, five, seven, one, three, and then the third one, seven, one, three, five. So now that you know the numbers, we want to build the chords or the chord inversions, and we're going to do these all based on a C. So it'll be a C major seven, a C minor seven, and a C dominant seven. So we start with the major seven chord, C major seven. And as I showed a moment before, you've got this. You've got C, G, B, E, G again. You can also play it up here. A lot of times I play it with my thumb. Just play the critical notes of it. And the astute among you are going to recognize right away that all the bar chords that we build are not necessarily in numerical order. So when you talk about the chords 1, 3, 5, 7 and the inversion 3, 5, 7, 1, that makes the most sense on piano and an instrument where everything's laid out in a certain way so that you can build them very symmetrically. When we do this on guitar, a lot of the times, if you want to do them exactly in numerical order, it becomes really difficult to play the fingerings in any standard tuning. And so what I'm going to give you is my preferred voicing for each one of these chord inversions in each one of the positions. Uh, and they will always have the root note so that you create the inversion. So if it's the first inversion, always the root note will be the third, second inversion it will be the fifth, and so on and so forth. But you can build these things out of order just like you built the major and minor chords. So my preferred voicing for the first inversion of a major seventh chord, where you have C's, E's, G's, and B's, you have to have an E in the root. I'll play that here, and it's the chord you saw me start the other tune with. So I have an E here, I go to a G here, a C here, back to a G here, and here's where I get that B in for the seventh. And as with all chords on guitar, this is completely portable. So if I'm playing E major seven, I just have to know what the second note in the one, three, five, seven progression is. In this case, it would be that note there, which is a G sharp. So I could take this whole thing that I just learned over here and just play it with G sharp as the root note. And then it becomes the first inversion of an E major seventh. For my second inversion, I need the root to be the fifth. In this case, the G. Now any permutation of this with the G and the bass, where you try to play it in order, gets really difficult. So I go for a very easy one, which is just to play the C major seven chord and then add the bass note that's right there. It sounds a little bit odd by itself on a guitar. A lot of times the way it would end up getting voiced is 
just maybe the triad on the guitar and the bass player playing the low G. And then finally for the third inversion, we have to build off of the B. So you have one, three, five, seven. So now the root note needs to be B here, or in this case, my favorite voicing is to build it here. I'll do it up an octave. And I have a B there, an E there. I'm using this C here and that G there to get all the four notes. If you did it up here, you'd have an open note. And again, everything's portable. Let's move on to the minor seven chords. So with the minor seven, all of our E's have now become E flats and all of our B's have become B flats. The G still holds. And so our first inversion is going to be built off of E flat as the root. You saw me use this inversion twice in the little mini song and it goes like this. Here's my E flat, the third. Then I have a G and a C. I get the B flat here, the seventh, and I have another G and an octave here. In the song we had the, the, on the second turnaround. Isn't that a whole lot more interesting than... Makes the chord so much more interesting when you can voice them that way. Now for the second inversion, again, it's going to be pretty simple. If you have your basic C minor 7 that you play started on the 6th string, I'm just going to build off the 5th and just play the rest of the chord. All the notes you need are there. And again, as with uh, on the major 7th chord, a lot of the times you play that voicing and it really gets accentuated by the bass player playing the root note as a G. And finally, for the third voicing where we have to build off of the B flat, I'm going to go way up here an octave higher, play the B flat here. And we just get the four notes in, so we're not playing the high E or the low E here. We've got the B flat, we've got the E flat, the G, and the C. And that becomes our next inversion. Let's move on to the dominant seven chords now. Now with the C dominant seven or any dominant seven, you've got the major third and the minor seventh, so it's a mix of the two. So for C, we're gonna build the first inversion off of E, but instead of B for the seventh, it's gonna be a B flat. So we start with the root note as an E again, here. Then I grab my seventh, the B flat here, get that diminished uh, dyad going there. I'm gonna have this string dead, even though in this case, uh, the open G would work, but I wanna be able to make the chord portable. Then I'm gonna to switch to this G here, and I'm gonna get the C in here. So I have this form. It's very much uh, should resolve to another chord sounding kind of chord, which is what you want out of a dominant seven chord. And again, it's portable. All this stuff works everywhere you play. So if we were in the key of G major, we would need a D dominant seven, which means we would need the F sharp to be the root. And that would resolve back to G. Our second inversion of it is gonna build off of the G note, the fifth. So we start with a G, we have a B flat next. We get our E there. Again, you notice you've got that diminished dyad there. A G and then a C building this voicing. And now finally, we have to build the chord off of the seventh note, which in this case is the B flat. B flat, we get an E here. The fingering on this is gonna be a little bit difficult. A G here, and then a C here. So C, G, going backwards, E, B flat. You saw me use that in the song as well when I was playing the C chord. A little bit funky sounding. So there you have all the voicings I prefer to use when doing inversions of seventh chords. Uh, I'll put this up on a chart on the screen here, and that chart is also gonna be available as a PDF that you can download from the description of the video below. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is making sure you know how you can use these, where you can use them in a song, and it's really just the same as knowing where your major and minor and major and minor seventh chords, dominant seven, get used in any key. I do have a lesson on that as well, just the major and minor chords. I'll link it up here. But to give you a real quick summary, let's say we're in the key of G major now. You have G major is your first chord. Your first, fourth, and fifth in any key are gonna be your basic major chords. So first, fourth, and fifth. If they're seventh chords, the first one is a major seven, the fourth is a major seven, the fifth is the dominant seven. And then all of your minors, which are two, three, and six, are going to be basic minor seven chords. And then the seventh scale degree, the one we didn't go over the inversions of, you just have your minor seven flat five. Now, all you have to know is that for any of these inversions, 
they just replace the chord. They don't get used in a different place. So if I'm in G major, I have G major seven or C major seven, the first major seven uh, inversion I showed you, that C major seven first inversion, will also work in place of the C major seven chord. All of the inversions are replacements for whatever the basic chord is that you would use. And so that's how you put them in a composition and put them to use and start making music with more interesting chord voicings when you want to get a little bit more out there. So as always, guys, if you have any questions or comments, if you need me to cover anything a little bit further, let me know in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And until next time, keep making great music. Hey friends, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. It makes the whole world better.